Okay, guys, in this episode, basically, we bring everything we learned up until this point and analyze perfectly competitive market where production is uh, included. All right, so again, this is a general equilibrium model with production. For simplicity, we assume that there are two agents. Uh, you can extend this analysis to 100 agents or think of this thousands of agents with three different types. That's important. There are three types of agents. We're going to call them as, uh, well, I'm going to call two of them as agent and then the other one is as a firm. All right. Uh, so for simplicity, there's one firm. Again, for simplicity, there's one firm. But you can think of that there are hundreds of firms uh, uh, with exactly the same production technology. Uh, and, and two agents. So the agents are like consumers. Firm is obviously the producer. All right. So what is the environment? Well, the environment is, well, again, two agents with the preferences or utility function represented by UA and UB. Each agent brings some, oh, there are two goods, by the way, again, for simplicity, you can extend this analysis to uh, many goods. So there are two goods, good one and good two. Each agent, A and B, bring some good one and some good two into this market. So these are their initial endowments, all right? So they bring some apples and bananas. Well, then the third agent in this economy is the firm, which is the supply side. The firm, uh, so this is a closed economy, all right? The firm is owned by agent A, all right? Um, another scenario would be it's owned by agent B or it's A owned by, uh, partially by agent A and partially by agent B. So that's an important assumption, you'll see why. So a firm owned by agent A and the production function, the technology of firm, firm is this, Y1 equals to F of Y2. So what is it? Y2 is the input, Y1 is the output. So here an important point, Y2 is actually good two, all right? And Y1 is good one. So think it this way, good one is equal to smartphone and good two is labor. All right. And so there's only one labor. There's no need for capital, let's suppose. And so, uh, you know, a labor by working can produce smartphone. While the consumers would like to enjoy not only smartphone, good one, but also labor or sort of the remaining labor, sort of leisure, right? They, I mean, nobody wants to work 24 hours a day. So therefore, they care about not only good one, but also good two. Well, the thing is, this factory needs input labor to produce output. If they use zero input, obviously they're going to produce zero output uh, by assumption. All right. Well, obviously these agents may already bring enough of labor and enough of, you know, smartphone. And so maybe the optimal thing for this firm to do is not to produce. We don't know it yet. So we're going to figure this out. So the question, well, here, one important thing is, is like prices. So what are going to be the prices? So here in this economy, uh, there's going to be two price because there are two goods, whether it's input or output doesn't matter. There's good one and good two. So there should be price of good one and price of good two, P1 and P2. And we would like to find the price ratio. What is the competitive equilibrium price ratio in this economy and what's going to be the demand and supply, obviously. But what we really care is the price ratio. Here, an important assumption, which is the following, uh, the input, which is good too, uh, the firm's price for good too and the consumer's price for good too will be the same, all right? Um, so in the labor example, maybe that's not so clear. Let's, I don't know, think of some another example of, I don't know, uh, apple. So uh, good one is, is apple pie, good two is apple. So the consumers enjoy apple pie and at the same time apple, sort of, you know, pure, simple apple. Well, the thing is there's a factory which is producing apple pie and they need to use apples as an input and as an outcome, they're going to produce apple pies. All right. So the thing is, um, so who is going to buy these apples in this market? Is it the consumer agent A or B or is it the firm? The prices are going to be exactly the same for everyone. 
So it's going to be P2. So the Apple price is P2. Well, in reality, obviously, this is not the case, right? If you are a big producer uh, versus a small consumer, obviously, your price for the same input or for the same good is, is usually different. But again, these assumptions are for simplicity, all right? So this is a, a very simple toy model. And trust me, it's complicated enough, even with these simplifications. All right. So once again, there's going to be only two price, price of good one, price of good two. And the question is, what is the perfectly competitive equilibrium price ratio? Well, what is the solution of this uh, problem? Uh, how do we solve it? Well, simple. There's an agent A, he's going to be uh, utility maximizing subject to his constraints, budget constraint. There's going to, and we're going to derive his demand curves. There's an agent B. He will also maximize his utility subject to budget constraint and we are going to derive his demand curve. And then there's firm. It is going to maximize profit subject to its technology. And so we are going to derive its demand for good two, which is the input, and its supply for good one. And then we're going to have a market clearing condition where demand is equal to supply for each good. So let's now look them um, uh, closer. So agent A's optimization problem is what? Maximize agent A's utility function, UA, by choosing X1A, X2A, non-negative numbers, subject to his constraint. Again, what is his... So probably in these problems, that is the most important part. How do you write the constraints? And then the second important part is how do you write the market clearing conditions? If you're wrong in any of those, the solution is going to be wrong. So the expenditure equals income, always. What is expenditure? Remember, there are two goods these guys are willing to consume, good one and good two. So I multiply them with the prices, so that's expenditure, equals uh, the income. So what is the income? There are two sources of income in this economy. One, what you bring as an endowment to this economy, right? You can sell your endowment and make money, kind of. And then the second thing, the, the, this firm is, is generating some profit, right? And so you can have money out of this profit. So this is exactly why we have pi in the, uh, in the uh, consumer A's uh, uh, income part. Because remember, we assume that firm one is owned by agent A only. If they shared profit equally, that would be pi over two here, right? But this time, first simple assumption, firm is owned by uh, agent A. So that means this is how much income uh, he's going to uh, generate from his initial endowment plus the profit from the firm that he owns. So uh, the X1A and X2A that solves this optimization problem is basically the demand curve for agent A. All right, exactly the same thing for agent B. Maximize utility of B by choosing non-negative X1B and X2B subject to budget constraint. Budget constraint of agent B is simpler because uh, there's no profit because she doesn't own uh, the firm. So her expenditure is equal to her income, which is generated by selling out all the endowments. All right. Well, then we're going to solve X1B, X2B. Obviously, all of those are functions of prices, P1 and P2, because they are demand curves. And finally, the firm, the supply side. Well, the firm is going to maximize its profit. I'm going to write the profit later, but well, let's talk about it. What is profit? So you have to be careful about when you write the profit. So profit is always revenue minus cost. So what is revenue? Well, in this economy, there's only one output, which is denoted by one Y, Y1. So what is the price of this output? P1. So P1 times Y1 is how much revenue this firm is going to generate when it produces Y1 unit of output. Well, what about the cost? Well, this firm use, is using only one input, which is denoted by Y2, and its price is P2. So therefore, P2 times Y2 is its expenditure. So revenue minus cost is the profit, as simple as this. And obviously, maximize profit by choosing how much output to produce and how much input to produce. They should be non-negative, subject to 
the technology, right? Y1 equals f of x2. I mean, how many apple pie can I produce by using x2 units of, I'm sorry, this is y2, by the way, y2 unit of input. All right, so once you solve this optimization problem, you're going to get y1, which is a function of p1 and p2, which is the supply curve for this firm. And then you're going to get y2, as a function of P1 and P2, which is a demand curve for the input, all right? So don't forget who is the demand side, who is the supply side. That's it. There are three type of maximization problem that we should solve to find the individual demand curves and individual supply curves. Then perfectly competitive equilibrium market price. How do we, so how do we solve them? Well, simple market clearing conditions, supply equals demand for each good. There are two goods. So for the first good, demand has to be equal to supply, but be careful about what supply is, what demand is. So here, consumer A and B are the demand side for good one, right? They consume the apple pie, which must be equal to the supply. You know, initial endowment for good one, Plus, don't forget, firm is producing good one. So the firm is producing apple pie. So the supply is going to be W1A plus W1B plus Y1. And then for good two, well, it is going to be this time the, the apple, right? The consumers also would like to uh, consume apple. So X2A plus X2B, I'm just finding market demand curve for good two. But don't forget, firm is also using apple as a, uh, input and so the firm is a demand side so y2 has to appear on the demand side this has to be equal to the supply for good two which is what well how many apples did these guys bring right nobody is is is, is producing apple in this economy only apple pie is produced right don't 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 forget that so therefore on the supply side there is nothing but initial endowments so once you solve these two equations, you are going to find P1 over P2. And that's exactly what we are after. Once you solve or find P1 over P2, the price ratio, you can come back here, plug those price ratios. I mean, the price ratio is enough, trust me, and figure out what the specific demand for good one and good two will be for agent A, for agent B, and for the firm, all right? And then obviously, if you like, you can then later calculate how much profit the firm is gonna make, uh, but all of them can be found only after we find the price ratio. That's it, that's how uh, a general equilibrium uh, with production uh, question uh, or scenario can, uh, is uh, analyzed.